Let's begin with an easy use case. I need a dashboard that will help me troubleshoot the performance issues I have with my VM and it should also include insights into the most important KPIs. We start creating a new dashboard by going to the dashboard page, clicking on the dashboard menu and selecting create dashboard. Now we have an empty canvas and we can start placing widgets on the canvas. The first one will be an object list showing the VMs and the second one will be a scoreboard showing the KPIs. First, we give the dashboard a new name and having a custom prefix to all your custom content like dashboards, in my case tcopton, is a good way to help you find your content afterwards. We begin with the configuration of the widgets. So let's start with the object list. First, we will give it a name and I tend to number the widgets to create a kind of a workflow going from one widget to the, uh, to the next one. For better usability, you can resize or maximize the widget. Every widget has a configuration section and depending on the config itself and the type of a widget, it also might have input transformation, output filter, additional columns. All those different configuration elements will be covered in the upcoming videos of this series. We set this object list to auto refresh its content every five minutes, so the list of the VMs. The self provider will be set to on. That means that the information in this widget will be provided by the widget itself. And we don't select the, select the first row here. For this object list widget, we select all as input data. So we are not limiting this widget to only certain objects. We just show everything or the widget is able to show every object. The output filter is the configuration which is limiting the list to only virtual machines. So we select the object type and we go to virtual machine and select it. With the advanced option, we can limit the virtual machines we would like to see in this list to only virtual machines which are powered on. This is done through the advanced settings in the output filter. In this advanced filter, you can use metrics and properties or relationship of the object and exactly specify what objects, in that case virtual machines, you would like to see. Like, for example, virtual machines which are powered off and not powered on, or virtual machines which are exceeding a certain threshold for CPU usage or another metric. In this example, we don't configure any additional columns and once click on save, we have a working object list showing virtual machines, which are powered on. Now let's go to the scoreboard. First, we give it a name following the numbering we selected previously. And we set the auto refresh for the scoreboard to five minutes as well. The scoreboard will receive the input information. So the virtual machine, it should show the information for from the other widget. So in that case, the self provider will be set to off. Next, we specify how the values itself should be displayed, how many columns we would like to see, and if the boxes should be a fixed size or adjusted to the widget. The Scobo widget comes with different visual themes. You can select the theme from the drop down menu and you can specify what should be displayed within the box, like object name, metric name. Metric unit. Or if you would like to see the spark line, which shows you the value over the selected period of time. We don't change the input transformation as 
We would like to see the metrics for the virtual machine and the virtual machine is exactly what the object list is providing to the scoreboard. So it's still the same object. Now output data is exactly where we specify what we would like to see in the scoreboard. So here we select the virtual machine as the object to look up for metrics and properties. And for this virtual machine, we can select the metrics. We start with one metric to show in the scoreboard. With a double click on the metric, we can specify our own box label for this one. Like for example, CPU demand. We can also change the unit from auto to something else. In that case, percent is okay, so it could be auto. And we have a color method. We can choose between none, symptom driven or custom. In that case, I select custom and specify the threshold for yellow, orange and red. Don't forget to click on update. To display some more KPIs for a selected virtual machine, we select additional metrics to display in within this scoreboard. We have a metric for already for CPU. Now we select something for memory and for virtual disk. Keep in mind, you just click once on the metric and then go to the next one and click once. A selected metric remains selected. Now we have those metrics added to our scoreboard. We do the same as before. We create our own box label for the metric. We select a unit if the outer unit is not exactly what we would like to see. And of course, we create a color method to showcase you the difference between a custom driven color method and symptom driven color method. We will set this one to symptom and the last one to none. In this use case for this scoreboard, we don't specify any output filter. We just leave it empty and click on save. To let the object list provide the data to the scoreboard, we need to wire them. To do this, you just click on show interaction and then connect the output of the select VM widget with the input of the check VM's scoreboard. So the one is an output, the other one is an input. Now, if you select a VM in the list, you will see the KPIs we specified for exactly that VM. Here we can see that the disk value box has no background as we set the color method to none. And we also see the white space as we configured the scoreboard widget to have four columns, but we have only three metrics. Let us change the configuration of the scoreboard widget and apply a column method based on thresholds to all the three metrics we already have. So we change it from symptom to custom and put in some meaningful threshold as value for yellow, orange and red background. The same for the virtual machine, virtual disks metric. We set it to custom and we set some other values to drive the color of the background for the for this particular box. Don't forget to click on update. If we now select a different virtual machine, then we see how the values change and also the color of the box changes accordingly. Let's see what happens when we change the configuration of the scoreboard from layout mode fixed view to layout mode fixed size. The fixed size mode allows us to specify the the size of the single box and it looks like this. We edit the scoreboard once again and we revert it back to fixed view and to have four columns with data we add another metric. We select the tool machine and in for this example, we select a metric for the network packets dropped value. 
we configure the metric the same way as we did before. We provide a custom label for this one. We select a unit. We select the color method and we specify the thresholds for the yellow, orange and red color for the box. As always, don't forget to click on update. Now we have four wonderful columns filled with data and if we cl click on save, we have our new custom dashboard ready to be consumed from the dashboards menu. Now just click randomly on any VM and you will see that the KPI scoreboard shows the data we specified within the widget. Now let us quickly come back to the color method of a scoreboard and the symptom option and let me explain what symptom is. In simple words, symptoms are conditions that indicate problems in your environment. So anytime VROPS is collecting a metric or property, you can specify a symptom where the collected value is compared with what you specified in the symptom. And if that threshold is breached, then the symptom has a certain criticality like warning, information, alert, etc. And using that symptom, that symptom criticality can control the color method when symptom is specified as the color method in a scoreboard. Like in this example where the color of the total disk latency is derived from the triggered symptom. In this case, it is the critical one, which is the more critical than the immediate. In this video, you have learned how to create a simple dashboard based on a real use case, how to place widgets on the canvas, how to configure widgets, including self-provider input and output filters, color methods, and how the interaction between widgets works. In the upcoming video, we will learn how to improve this simple dashboard to better meet the requirements of the VM troubleshooting use case. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you don't miss the next part.